maceration of tissues. So first, let's understand what are tissues. As I've told you, tissues are specialized group of cells having similar origin, similar structure, and most importantly, similar function. It means it is as if there is a division of labor. Each and every tissue is specialized for a specific function. And that function cannot be performed by anyone else. For example, if I talk about my eardrum, now it is meant for hearing, my retina, it is meant for vision. Now do you expect a retina to hear and eardrum to see? It's not possible. So therefore, each and every tissue is unique, having specialized function, and that is what is called as division of labor. In plants, tissues are broadly of two types, depending upon their source of origin and age. And therefore, tissues are grouped into two types, meristematic and permanent. What is the difference between the two? Meristematic tissues are those tissues which are recently formed. That means when that plant is just coming out of the seed, when it is in a seedling stage, when it is growing exponentially, so all the initially formed tissues are termed as meristematic. They are young, they are dynamic, they are extremely active and most importantly they are responsible for elongation of shoot as well as root. Not only shoot and root even, they are responsible for internodal distance growth and also the girth or the diameter of the stem. So let's see. Meristematic tissues are of broadly three types. They are apical meristem, intercalary meristem, and lateral meristem. Now all these three meristems are based on position. I once again repeat, apical meristems, as the name suggests, they are placed at the apices or the tip. And based on the tip, they are again of two type. If the meristem is present at the tip of the shoot, it is termed as shoot apical meristem. And if the meristem is situated at the tip of the root, it is termed as root apical meristem. So that means by default, shoot apical meristem are responsible for the growth of shoot length and root apical meristem is responsible for the growth of root length. Now one thing we need to be very very clear. Since we are talking about meristematic tissues, as I've told you, they're hyperactive. They're continuously dividing. It means they ought to have some unique features, such as their thin walled. It means lignin depositions are minimal. They have large nucleus, dense cytoplasm. It means there is no vacuoles in them rich in mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, they all are abundant. And therefore, no one can match their dividing ability. They divide mitotically. Now let's talk about the second type of meristematic tissue, intercalary. 
what does intercalary means intercalary means the distance between two nodes which is termed as the internode so this meristem is responsible for the elongation of the internodal distance and therefore when each and every internode increases in length the overall length of the plant increases so therefore if we talk of crop plants like sugarcane we all know the economically important part of a sugar plant is the stem more elongated the stem is more economical viable it becomes so who is responsible for the elongation of this internal distance intercalary meristem now let's talk about the lateral meristem lateral they are present all along the boundary or the periphery of this stem it means they are responsible for maturation they are responsible for the increase in girth or the diameter of the stem and thus the plant becomes woody the plant becomes strong it's a characteristic feature of trees so therefore meristemic tissues are of three types depending upon their position now let's talk about the permanent tissue as the name suggests permanent tissues are permanent it means they don't divide normally they can always divide when you apply some type of hormones but that is exceptional but normally permanent tissues they don't divide they are mature enough they are fully differentiated and hence they have a unique function to perform now the permanent tissue based on structure and functions they are broadly of two types simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue what is the difference between simple and complex simple permanent tissue means it is homogeneous it is made up of only one type of cells whereas complex tissue means heterogeneous two or more different type of simple tissue combines together to form a complex tissue so the simple tissue based on their structure and thickenings and their arrangement and their function they are of three types parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma now parenchyma they are isodiametric in shape isodiametric means circular they have a large nucleus at the center that indicates they are active they have dense cytoplasm all around that indicates they are active and living so you can see they are thin walled and you can see their intercellular space it means they are loosely arranged and most importantly this parenchyma their chlorophyllous their photosynthetic they even store reserve food materials and they are actually present at the young growing soft portion of any plant now let's talk about the collenchyma collenchyma is very similar to parenchyma but the only difference is that in collenchyma 
the cells are isodimetric they have large nucleus however the difference is the interconnecting point that means the common juncture between 2 3 4 cells the common meeting point they are lignified so thickenings are always at the corners you see thickenings are exclusively present at the corners of two or three cells it means in due course of time parenchyma has undergone compaction and therefore due to pressure this collenchyma has developed thickenings of lignin and depending upon the type of thickenings they may be of various type lacunar lamellar etc sclerenchyma when collenchyma further undergoes compaction packaging so they assume the shape of a hexagonal structure a honeycomb like structure you see a honeycomb like structure they are extremely thick walled lignified and they don't have any cytoplasm or nucleus indicating that they are dead so when they are dead tissues it means they provide mechanical support now this sclerenchyma based on their structures they are of two types fibers and sclerids which i will discuss with you in the next lecture so you see these are the three types of simple permanent tissue now let's talk about the complex permanent tissue as i told you they are heterogeneous and they are of two types xylem and phloem and they are conducting tissues they are tracheary elements so this xylem is further of four types so since they are made up of many different type of tissues so therefore they are termed as complex they may be tracheids vessels xylem parenchyma and fibers tracheids they are much more elongated they may have tapered ends they may have pits which may be simple or bordered which i will discuss with you in my next lecture vessels they have blunt end they have perforations they are connected with each other through vessel members xylem parenchyma as the name suggests they are parenchymatic they stores reserve food materials they are thin walled xylem fiber mechanical support phloem sieve tube companion cell they go hand in hand without companion cell sieve tube has no function reason being sieve tube is non living and companion cell is nucleated living so without companion cell sieve tube cannot help in conduction of photosynthate so therefore sieve tubes they will have cytoplasm but the cytoplasm are present all along the periphery and no nucleus so therefore the central portion of the sieve tubes are vacuolated through which photosynthate may pass and companion cells they're sandwiched between sieve tubes they help in the translocation they exert pressure for the photosynthate to travel phloem parenchyma as the name suggests they're parenchymatic helps in storage and phloem fibers mechanical support so in maceration you are going to observe especially the complex permanent tissue so let me conclude tissues are actually group of cells having unique structure function and origin 
initially formed are meristematic and this meristematic tissue in due course of time becomes permanent a hyperactive cell becomes fully differentiated and permanent and it doesn't divide so there's a series of events like meristematic tissue becomes permanent and then simple permanent parenchyma becomes colenchyma in due course of time and then it becomes clarenchyma at maturity so don't look into these tissues from isolated angles imagine as we grow once we were a zygote then we became a pro embryo to an embryo to a fetus to a baby to a boy to a man this is the developmental stages of a human being this is the developmental stages of plant tissue in my next lecture i'm going to draw the diagrams of these tissues and then you will understand the importance of this experiment on maceration thank you so much